Since 2020, there has been an explosion in affordable cinema primes. With Irix, Mikey, SLR Magic, and Dizio Film, the Dizio Film Vespid Prime lenses, along with their Pictor Zoom Brethren, have become incredibly popular, mainly due to their affordability, as well as their image quality. I've owned a few Dizio Film lenses for a couple years, and I've come to dig them quite a bit, so I figured it was time to give them a proper review. Now, keep in mind that this review is by no means scientific, but it is something that I've wanted to do for quite some time. First, let's talk about the positives. Build quality on these lenses is quite good, considering their price point. Point. They have some weight to them and they feel durable. Now, obviously, I wouldn't recommend going out and testing the durability of any lens because that's just plain stupid, but Dizio Film did construct some tough little buggers here. Focus rings on these babies are buttery smooth, exactly how a focus ring should be. I understand that there are folks out there that like a little resistance to the rings, but if you ask me, having a smooth focus rings like these Vespids do, it allows for some quick rack focusing as well as making your follow focus for your subjects a breeze. Now to the image quality. The Vespids are like a hybrid of old and new. They're not clinical, but they're not entirely vintage either. They're somewhere in between, with more credence given to the vintage creative side. While the focus breathing is minimal, the flaring is somewhat consistent with that of older lenses, and the shallow depth of field is rather creamy. As far as chromatic aberrations go, every lens has them. Chromatic aberration doesn't really bother me too much. Sometimes it can add some real character to the image, especially when it comes to anamorphics. Across their focal sets, for the most part, the Vespids are fairly controlled. Only the 50mm and the 90mm macro seem to give off the most chromatic aberration when dealing with subjects next to some very bright backgrounds. Now to my gripes, albeit a few. While I adore the smoothness of the focus rings, I do wish that the aperture ring had a little bit more resistance. It's not horribly loose, but I would prefer to have it just a little bit stiffer. Another gripe that I have is, well, more subjective than anything, but really I do wish that these lenses were faster. Sure, T2.1 is solid, I mean, the Zeiss CP3s are T2.1s, but if these were all T1.5, allows the user to have a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to shooting, especially in low light situations. Obviously, you don't have to shoot wide open all the time, but having that flexibility is very nice to have. If Dizio Film really wanted to hammer in that nail into the coffin of its competitors, then they should release a line that is a T1.5. The focal lengths up to this point include 16, 21, 25, 35, 40, 50, 75, 90 millimeter macro, 100, and 125. All of which, excluding the 16 and 90, have T-stops up to 2.1. The 16 and 90 are only at T2.8. Up to the point of this video, each lens on average costs about 1,399 US dollars, which for their build quality and image quality is actually quite a steal if you ask me. Now, as I said earlier, they're not as fast as some other lenses, or not as sharp or as clinical as others, but if you want a happy medium in between vintage and modern, Dizio Film is where it's at, my friends. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. I plan on making more like this in the future. I have a Zeiss Milvis set that I'm in love with, and I hope to get around to that in the near future if my procrastination doesn't take over. Stay tuned.